Yo, what's happening guys? Hope you're all doing okay this week. So first off, I just want to apologise for last week's upload. Uh, there were some technical difficulties with the sound. Uh, I tried to sort that out and made the situation even worse. But we're not going to have those problems this week and I will eventually get that video back up and running in perfect order. So this week we are going to uh, again do another image walkthrough. This time with this image here, which again was from the Grey's Court photo shoot in York. So basically I'm just going to walk you through all the kind of steps it took to create this image. So this image kind of uh, was a little bit planned. I knew the area, the corridor I was going to shoot in and I had the idea of maybe backlighting the hair of the model and having a kind of little bit of fantasy element of the moon above her but then as I was going along the kind of the the outfit reminded me of an owl so far it'd be good if she had an owl resting on her arm and then I thought I was thinking of kind of British kind of things like folklore and nursery rhymes and then obviously we had a big clock so I added in three mice for like three blind mice so one two and three on the floor there so that's just kind of a little bit of how the concepts came together so uh, let's jump into the to the edit now so I st there was two images and I liked the the head on one image and the body on the other so what I did it was I as you can see here went in and just blended them both together to get the best uh, we can call this Frankensteining uh, or you, people do call it Frankenstein but you can call it whatever you want so now I'm, all I'm doing is I just uh, found a free stock image of an owl online so I just making the selection of that using refine edge just to kind of go along the f feathers as you can see here in a minute so refine edge is uh, pretty good for things like feathers uh, once you get used to how it works so just bringing the owl into the layers panel now obviously the owl is super orange and the rest of the image is quite blue so what I'm doing here is a, is a cool little trick so when you're trying to blend in things composite wise you've got your colour but you've also got your tonal value so the tonal is dark and light so as you can see the owl's tonal range is a lot kind of higher lighter in value than the rest of the image so if you change if you put a black and white adjustment layer on top you can use that to help you find the right tone for the owl so you get rid of all the colour so all you're doing is looking at the blacks and the whites so as you can see the owl is far too light for the image so what I'll do then is I will go into uh, I will come into Photoshop, add a curves adjustment layer and then I will just kind of use a curves adjustment to bring the kind of the tone of the the darkness of the owl down. So what I did there as well is I kind of masked it off the sides because there's going to be some rim light coming from this side and again this is a help group so what I'm doing now is I'm looking at the hues of the image and I'm just trying to find the uh, the right hues for the bird so there's kind of like this orangey yellow colour here so I'm trying to match those hues again with a curves adjustment just kind of trying to uh, blend it together so that's looking a little bit better and that's as it was before but then again still playing with kind of the curves uh, RGBs just to get the right kind of colour and style and then using a layer mask just to paint in the differences in a non-destructive way. So sometimes it takes a little bit of getting used to but once you kind of do this a few times you kind of get an eye for it and you can kind of just go by your own judgement and then because it's non-destructive you can always go back and change the, the uh, layers and the curves. So now we're still just kind of colour tone in the, the owl, this time just adding some colour balance in there to play with the mid-tones. And this, like I said, can take a little bit of uh, messing around, I'm getting everything right. And again, as you can see here, I've just masked off this area here, where the light is going to be hitting it. And it's hitting the kind of back of our model as well. Now just going and refining the uh, the mask around the owl. Don't want to get rid of all the shadow because it kind of uh, you need that to ground it onto the arm. So uh, added in my own shadow again, just with soft light. Uh, I mean normal 
on a with a black brush or just simple dark colour from around here and just paint it in myself. Then paint it in over the highlight what was on the arm because that if the light was hitting the back of the owl there wouldn't be light on this part of the girl's arm. So what we're going to do now, that little pause there was probably me just uh, stopping and just kind of taking in the image and having a think about it. It's good to do that sometimes. Just kind of take a break, have just stare at the image and little details and see what you, you, you kind of brain thinks of. So obviously the owl was too sharp for the image so I just kind of added a slight gouging blur onto the onto the owl just to so the sharpnesses of the images match. So now just cutting out the mice. Again it's free stock images online. Just cutting out the mice and adding them in. So just placing them now. So one of the longest parts of a uh, of something like this can be uh, just finding stock images. Just going, you can spend hours just trying to find the, the correct stock images that you want to use for an image. So that can be quite painstaking sometimes, but it's always good to get the best images you can. I mean, when using these free stock sites as well, you've got lots of choice. Uh, premium stock is always kind of better, but you can't complain for free. So what I'm going to do now, again, this was the three, three blind mice theme. So what I do now is I kind of just go in here and now I've placed them, I go back in and just cut them out correctly. So I'll just zoom past this part. So that's one. So again, colour matching using the curves adjustment RGBs to just kind of RGB curves just to kind of get the colour matching and moving it around so then again cutting out the next one using the fine edge for the hair and again using curves for the tone and then uh, add the curves RGB just to match the, the colour so again same for the next mouth so now we've got the mice in place just clean to tidy up them, this mouse a little bit and then again I do kind of play with the tones and later on again going back into the owl and just kind of refining like I said because it's non-destructive if you feel like something's a little bit off you can always go back in and just readjust so now I'm just going to start work on the moon so again this is a, just a moon PNG stock free stock PNG off Pixabay or somewhere like that and because I knew I wanted this effect beforehand, I actually did have a uh, person standing here with a light stand and a light holding the light up here with a beauty dish on. So as you can see, we're getting the nice uh, light around here, which makes it more realistic. And just adding a glow to the moon now, uh, using traditional like glow uh, techniques like screen blend mode and linear dodge blend mode then now just kind of going in over the uh, hair of the model just because the, high, the rim light of the hair would be a little bit stronger with the light so close and again just doing the same on the owl again mostly using curves uh, I just I use curves for quite a lot of things in, in Photoshop. I think uh, you've got far more control with curves. So again now probably just kind of looking at the image as a whole and trying to work out if there's something that needs changing or if something doesn't look correct. So now obviously I decided this mouse was too bright and the image needed to be a little bit darker. Add in a little bit of shadow in. So shadow I use a, just is a blank layer and then I paint the shadow in with either black or I'll sample or dark from around the area it's in and just paint it in with that which is kind of more realistic. Let's just move a little bit further on. So again I was just again using that black and white help layer just to see uh, the tonal values of everything. So now I'm just uh, Again, refining the mouse on the clock, blending it in a little bit better. Again, it's always good practice to name your layers as I'm doing here. As you can tell from previous walkthroughs, I don't always do this, but it does 
keep your lace panel tidy if you have everything in groups and kind of labelled up. So now I'm just doing a bit more cleaning, <coughs> just getting rid of this, uh, I don't know what it was, bag or paper, which was probably keeping the, <laughs> the big clock steady. Just getting rid of the uh, no unnecessary little pieces of the image. We don't want the eye to be drawn to anything unnecessary. So just cleaning up pieces on the wall, little bits of dirt. I think there's some scratches somewhere as well. I'm just doing the, again this doing just doing this with a healing brush, so it's fairly simple. So now just kind of refining the cloud, uh, the moon. So as you can see, there there is the arm of the person who was uh, holding the light stand. So. Obviously we have to get rid of that. So just using lay masks again. Oh, already uh, what we were already using. And then now painting over the see-through part of the fabric. Getting uh, distracted with emails. <laughs> So now I think it looks like we're going to go in and dodge and burn. Again, if anyone's watched a walkthrough of my uh, images, I always dodge and burn. Well, first actually I went and cleaned up the model's face a little bit. Just getting rid of any blemishes, get rid of the tattoo. Uh, just cleaning this area up again where the light stand was, as you can see. Now just going through and beginning do the dodge and burn process, which uh, everyone should be quite uh, up to date on this. Especially, well, people who have watched my tutorial should be anyway, because I do it every single image, because it's the way you get the painterly feel, and I love that painterly kind of feel in my images. So again, just kind of adding depth, depth to the face, and pulling out details in the face, and adding shape. Makeup is uh, really good on this image, but I like it. It's kind of a little bit surreal. So again, just kind of dodging and burning the dress. So let's just skip forward a little bit, as you can see. Now going down the bottom of the dress, just kind of dodging and burning the creases. Now onto the owl, same. Duplicating the dodge and burn and strengthening it twice, the double, double the strength, and then just lowering the opacity on the second one. Now, just going through and brightening up the clock a little bit because it's one of the main features of the image. Darkening the back uh, just to take your uh, focus away from this area but also add more focus to the model because that's where your eye wants to go to the, to, to the owl and the model. I'm just brightening up the model a little bit. Again, on non destructive with layer masks. Now playing with the tone of the image, the contrast. And again, with, curve, with a curves adjustment. Here, just using the infinite color panel to add some color to the image. Now just pulling out some details using the Nick Color Effects plugin, detail extractor, and just kind of locally, uh, subjectively painting the kind of plugin effect into the area I want it. Now just going into the gradient map for some color grading, and just adding some more blues and into the whole image and yellows, kind of going with the color theme that we already had to start with. Now adding a little bit of colour into the shadows which always gives you that painterly feel. And just put them lowering the opacity up and down just to kind of see, see what strength we want it. And 
I'm guessing now that is it. So maybe just some final adjustments here. Uh, just adding some detail, so sharpening the image with uh, topaz detail. It's a nice little plugin just to get some detail again. Just pulling out the sharpening uh, locally where I want it to with a layer mask, not just globally sticking it onto everything. And that is the final image as it is. So again, this time hopefully you'll get to hear my voice all the way through. Uh, I hope you learn some new techniques so you kind of just get a bit of information on how you like start a edit from beginning to end. Uh, I'm quite active on social media so feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Please comment and subscribe on my YouTube channel as I'm putting a lot more time into that and it'd be very helpful and I will be eternally grateful. And that's it for this week. Peace!